It's really great to be with all of you today. This is our second Taco Tuesday, but this time today I'm going to be focusing on just one FactSite database, although we are a collection of reference databases for students in K through college. So if you, and, and for public library patrons as well. So we invite you to request a trial anytime. You can request through Wills or you can contact me. I'm happy to set up a trial for you. And we are offering extended trials right now so that you can have your patrons or students actually test drive FactSite for specific coursework or research projects so you can see whether it's meeting their needs. So FactSite, as I said, is a collection of databases. We have a history bundle that includes these six databases, US and World Biography, Shapers of Society, American History, Defining Moments in US History, Milestone Documents, and Countries and Cultures. The subject of our conversation today is Milestone Documents, which is this one. I'm clicking on that icon to show you um, the way it's organized. We partnered with the Schlager Group. Neil Schlager is a former Gale editor and has been producing Milestone Documents resources in print for quite a few years. And we um, have partnered with him to bring 1,700 primary sources from US and world history online for the first time fully searchable database with scholarly commentary and other features. So I'm just going to give you a quick tour here today, and I encourage you to ask questions in the chat if there's anything you'd like me to focus on or anything you'd like to know more about. So researchers can search this database using the alphabetical index for browsing, the popular topics in American history. So these are the different eras in American history. We've just added this particular special topic index and we're going to be adding one for world history as well. And then in this index, you can take a look at primary sources. These parallel the Schlager Group's print products. So there was a US history to 1865, US history to 1865 to the present, et cetera. The different topics, world religions, paralleling the um, Schlager Group print products. Now let's dive into one of these sections and see how the documents are organized. Each one of these sections in the top section includes some overview essays about the particular era in history. So here we have um, deepening economic and social discord during the time period known as Manifest Destiny. What is Manifest Destiny? You can read this essay. Southern, Southern demands for the expansion of slavery and the compromise of 1850. Important topics that students and researchers will want to know more about as they're studying this in this particular time period in history. Then we follow with the primary source documents that are included here. So let's take a look at this first one. This is the act to establish Yellowstone National Park. For every document, there's a similar format. So at the top, who is the author? In this case, it's a congressional act. So the author is shown as US Congress. What's the date of the, con of the particular document? There's scholarly commentary connected with this document. So who's the commentator? She's, he or she's listed here. What indexes in this database is this document included? So it's included in Manifest Destiny and also in the Reconstruction Era. Related documents include Theodore Roosevelt's statements pertaining to conservation and Thomas Jefferson's message to Congress about Lewis and Clark and the Treaty of Fort Laramie. The editors have tagged those documents to be related to this one. And then these are the sections that accompany this particular document. Every document in the database, there are 1,700. Not every document includes all of these features. I'll show you another one in a minute that's just the document itself. But in the, in, for the most frequently researched or the most important documents, you'll see all these sections included. So the first section, clicking on this plus sign here, it expands. It gives an overview or puts the document in context for the researcher. Just a couple of paragraphs. Sometimes it's this um, overview is longer depending on the scholar who wrote it. Then we follow with the primary source document itself. It's presented in this easy to read text font. And 
every database, every FactSite database has audio read along. So if the document is one that is in more difficult language, or if you have a researcher who just wants to have the article read along to him, you click on this arrow and the document will be read. And um, the, the style of the, do, of the audio read-along is that the full sentence is highlighted. It doesn't play well through Zoom, so I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but take a preview. You're welcome to test it out. It highlights the full sentence, and then each individual word is highlighted as it's read. The reader, uh, the researcher can control the speed of the reading. You can slow it down, speed it up. And um, it's a really good support for students who need a little bit of, or researchers who need a little bit more help. The next section here puts the document in context. So why was Yellowstone National Park being created? What was going on in the country at the time? So here's an essay that gives a little bit of history. Who were the key players surrounding this particular document? Um, you can follow along the history of how the document developed. This section about the author, this is US Congress. And it, it, in this case, who wrote the bill is a subject of scholarly debate, apparently, but you can read a little bit more about who was involved with writing the bill. And then we have the analysis of the bill. What were the sections? In, in the case of some documents, the document is analyzed section by section or almost line by line. Who was the audience for the document? If it's a speech, you might be reading about who the speech was given before. Um, if it's a letter, you'll know more about um, who the author was writing to. If it's an editorial, what part of the country was the editorial reaching? Things like that. What was the impact of the act to establish Yellowstone? You see, here's some information about that. And then here's a section that teachers and professors are really enjoying, and that is study questions, a glossary of terms, and suggestions for further study. So there are study se questions suggested here, glossary of terms, and then suggestions for further study. We do have a guide to milestone documents that provides information on which documents have quizzes or um, test yourself study documents to go along with them. So that's helpful to teachers and professors who want to identify which documents have that sort of information. And then if you're working in a school district where your students are using Noodle tools, FactSite is fully integrated with Noodle tools. So clicking on the cited Noodle tools will import a citation directly into your student researcher's Noodle tools subscription. That's a popular program used in high schools. And we do have an MLA 9 citation included in every single fact site document. So your researchers can find the citation already formatted for them according to MLA 9. So that's one example of a document. Um, I'm going to go back to the overview here. And you can see that each of these topics has each of these um, sections would be similarly organized. The Southern Demands for the Expansion of Slavery. This is an essay that at the top, we have an abstract of the article that says a little bit about what was going on in the South, and then an overview essay there. And then I want to show you an example of a document that does not have analysis, the very next one. Ephraim Kirby Smith, who was writing letters from the front in the Mexican War. In this case, we have all the um, information in the header, but the primary source document is the only thing that's included, just the letters themselves. And you can see they go from April 9th, 1846 through to, oh, that's my five minute warning, through to, um, what's the date here? September 7th, and at the end of this section, the writer says, I'm thankful that you do not know the peril we are in, good night, and the editor's note, the writer fell mortally wounded the next morning. So this was, these were the final words he penned before finishing um, 
before the end of his life. So there are some interesting things to dip into among the 1700 documents and your students and researchers are um, sure to find something interesting to read when they dip into this database. I want to take a minute to um, tell you about our, uh, our history bundle. When you bundle the databases together, there's about a 35% savings. We do have discount pricing through Wells for all of our subscriptions. In fact, say subscriptions are very affordable. We have integration with most of the learning management systems um, that are being used, Canvas, ClassLink, Brightspace, Schoology. And you're welcome to take a trial for an individual database or a bundle of data databases anytime. We have um, audio read-along. If your professors or teachers are using Google Classroom, we have links to add to add articles to Google, Google Classroom. And fact site links are persistent. So if you if a professor were to choose a specific link for an article, let's say Henry Clay's remarks, if you were to copy this link and use it in a lesson plan or an assignment. The link is persistent. It will always take the student or the researcher directly to this particular article. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say? Does anybody have any questions about um, our FactSite databases? Encouraging you to take a trial anytime. Have your students come back and explore. Your researchers come back and explore. We offer authentication in almost any method you can imagine. IP authentication, easy proxy, open Athens, um, dedicated URL. We haven't found an authentication system that we haven't been able to accommodate. So we would welcome the opportunity to work with you and to authenticate through your system. I put my contact information in the chat. We're also, we also have information available through Wills and we would look forward to hearing from any of you. Our databases are quite affordable and um, we look forward to hearing from you after this webinar. Thank you. And thanks, Jeff, for putting everything together. Thank you, Susan, for joining us today. Um, I, I can say that I have, um, I think, that rarest of all middle school children, uh, the history nut. So I, I think that uh, these kinds of resources are exactly uh, what my student is looking for uh, from their uh, kind of school, uh, the products or the databases provided by their school library. So I know that uh, there are, uh, uh, it's, it's the kind of thing that can make um, these, topics uh, and resources uh, relevant and easy to understand for students who aren't uh, weird um, <laughs> history buffs like my own <laughs> who lives in my I, house. <laughs> I did forget to mention one search mechanism, Jeff, when you said that about searching about students who are crazy history buffs. When, you, when your subscription includes more than one fact site database, you can search here for the particular topic you're looking for and it will search across all of our databases and you often get more than one really excellent and deep resource to explore so we have something for every reading level and every interest level so thanks for um, giving me the chance to talk about FactSite today thanks for joining us susan um great so yeah i will echo what susan said if you have questions or uh want to learn more um you can oh yeah so you can see uh uh, that Susan has put some contact information in chat, but you can also, of course, always reach out to us um, here uh, at Wills.